Good morning, everyone. It's Andrew with Supercharged Stocks. Today, we're speaking with President and CEO of Desert Mountain Energy, Robert Rolfing. It's always a pleasure catching up with Robert. We saw him last month uh, when they had the shareholder meeting, and it was a great meeting with about 120 people. And I wanted to touch one-on-one -on -one with him on some of the aspects of what's happening here. And this is a vertically integrated company. This isn't just a stock to trade. This is not just about finding out what the, the latest news is. This is a bigger story than that. This is a company building exercise. It's a large, large scope and scale. I'm really looking forward to what's happening and developing with this company. Take a look at this interview. Good morning, it's Andrew with Supercharged Stocks. Uh, excited to have uh, Mr. Robert Rolfing here from Desert Mountain Energy. Always a pleasure to speak with you. Uh, lots happening. We saw you last month. Uh, you hosted your shareholder meeting, which was extremely well attended. I think there was 120 people on it. Uh, lots of great questions. It was it was an eye opener, and uh, it certainly got people excited. And lots happening in the meantime. How's it going today? Well, thank you for having me in today, Andrew. I appreciate it. Uh, things are going pretty good. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, getting ready to start drilling. We're in the process. We had the site surveyed in. And so this next round, what we had announced is we will be drilling three wells back to back to back. And uh, they will all be within, oh, probably about a five mile radius of each other. And they're all on private property. And so it's a little bit different from what we have done thus far, but it's within our very, the plan that we had originally instituted to drill wells one and two to prove up two or two specific type of things in one area. Well, number three, we found what we we're looking for there. Now, well, number four, five, and six will all be together. And those are all basically, it's another area, but based on what we've seen on the other three, that's why we decided to punch three in a row and uh, go for more production. And that's real close to the area too, to where we will be putting our, uh, processing facilities into play so and it's it's just it's a good solid area to do it so we're looking forward to that uh you know we had done a couple press releases and we just did another one this morning where we announced we had acquired just under another ten thousand acres uh into the basket of our uh holdings and those those leases were based on what we drilled in wells one, two, and three, but they're they're tight to where we had already drilled, and it expands it right down. We're able to not have to pick up a lot of property on either side. We could stay right down the trend that yeah. we are on seeing there, and so we're looking forward to that. That's one of the other things that uh, has come out our, in our press release uh, a week ago. We put into the provided some guidance on possible reserve numbers. Uh, we purposely stayed away from some numbers uh, yeah. for pricing, and we'll just let people draw their own conclusions on, on those at this time. We will be back in with some more uh, when we finish Wells 4, 5, and 6. We will do a, a very compressed uh, reserve analysis for all the wells, but that was just for one well, the first well. Yes, and, and those so numbers, you, just so I can highlight just quickly here, are, are pretty astounding uh, for this well one, the state number 10. Um, I was looking here quickly, There's, if you look at the gross calculations, it's about 7% helium. You got a 4.2 million, a 2.1 and a 1 million. So about 10 million MCF off that one, which, mm -hmm. is, <laughs> which is astounding. Uh, that's, that's great. And I mean, if we were to, you know, there's a couple of different price points, but if we were to look at like $840, uh, helium at 7% helium, uh, the numbers are pretty astounding for that. I mean, you could be looking at 170 million, 240 million coming out of that. Well, like there's some big staggering numbers. If someone was to go home, punch some numbers in, play around with it themselves, uh, there, there could be pretty, pretty big numbers very quickly. They do. And the reason I just stayed away from that uh, pontification, because we are produced, going to be producing from zones that no one's produced from, no one up there. Uh, 
so we're trying to, I don't want to be known as a, a promoter, Andrew. Yeah. I, I want to, I want to base this on here's reality. I'm an engineer. Sorry. I am an engineer and I tend to stick with realities and not pie in the sky. And these are to provide people who they can pontificate whatever they want. Yes. Uh, but these are within the realms of, what could be real possibilities yeah. and uh, how we arrived at the 840 number that yeah. basically is what the average was on just balloon helium yeah which is an 80 20 mix it's not even pure helium yeah it's yeah. a 99 9 uh, or 99 5 uh, depending on who you're getting it from but it's 80 only 80 percent helium and 20 percent air that's yeah. it so uh, that's what the values would, would be just if we did it for balloon helium. You know, and one of the other interesting things, that when you look at these numbers, and that's based on just one well, most junior companies, which we are, we're still a junior company, never in their life cycle in short term do they get to drill, be in charge of drilling, be in charge of the exploration and actually control a tier one prospect, let alone multiple within yes. the same company. So I'm really proud of what we have uh, put together. Uh, that's why we didn't really feel we needed a lot of acreage. We know where the trends are. Uh, in comparison, uh, a friend of mine had uh, some property in another state they wanted to look me at. Uh, wanted me to really look at closely for helium and it was a pretty big land package but it all came down to very short very tight areas that you have to stay on the same trend that's why i just in desert mountain i've not chased having uh, a, a huge land package and still now we're we're going to start running it up real close to a hundred thousand acres as it is, so that's yeah. still sizable. And then by having a tier one prospect, I like to use this because there's a lot of folks that are more used to a uh, mining prospect, and it means a little bit. Well, how do you really differentiate? What what do you mean a tier one, Robert? Well, most people tier one if you're drilling for you know good grade of gold or a precious metal you know if you can get 10 grams across 10 feet you're doing great yeah and that's kind of the equivalent of where we're at instead of we're doing drill you know we're drilling after that is our goal high high grade instead of low grade and huge tonnage that you have to process a whole lot more uh, and it's like that's why I say a tier two project would be a prospect would be drilling, you know, one gram across 10 feet. Yeah. Yeah. Skinnier <laughs> veins driving down two kilometers. This is shallow. Yeah. This is easy pickings. It's going to be, it's, it's near surface in, far, in, in terms of geo geology. Um, and I want to just kind of reiterate a couple of things because it's so important is that this, I, I don't, personally trade, I have no interest in trading companies. I like to find real management, real companies that are doing real businesses. And the reason why I wanted to bring up those numbers was not to be promotional and not put, to put you on the spot, but was to remind people, this is building a complete vertically integrated business. This isn't a company to just go, we're just a company, you know, a lot of time exploration, we found something, we're just gonna sell the asset, we'll move on. This is what I think, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, completely ver vertically integrated where you're going to have <laughs> the potential of a massive tier one asset you control completely from start to finish that you're going to process as well. Uh, and that, that whole step, step by step takes obviously a lot longer. It's a bigger plan, but that is a huge undertaking and certainly has the potential for, uh, you know, ideally a huge price increase in stock. And it isn't something to be worried about in the next three months or six months. Yes, there's news, but this is a multiple year story where for my investors and people that I like to talk to is they should be waiting for the, the news coming out and reinvesting and looking, are you hitting milestones and, and doing what you're saying you're doing? Don't worry about the three months. Are you hitting this? And maybe they'll sell this and that that's, this is not this story. This is a big long play that can, that can, if you play it right and you guys keep hitting the numbers you you're doing uh, can change people's lives. 
that's why, you know, some, I've had a number of uh, investors call me up and uh, the ones who have been involved in oil and gas, they cannot believe that we've already hit three for three. And these, these are wildcat wells. I fully, I fully admit it. They are ranked wildcats. And so to come into an area where you're doing that, you have three for three, I think really uh, goes back to, it proved up our hypothesis um, of what we we're looking for, number one. Uh, again, going back to prior to that, I've been working on this off and on for 19 years. So this is not like, uh, Robert woke up one morning and put a bunch of his ge geological friends together and said, well, let's go drill a well today. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like that at all. And then to plan for even the production, you know, it's been very, we're looking forward to after we drill wells four, five, and six, and we have the flow test, then we're looking to, we'll be able to give more guidance as to exact uh, what the reserves are. And also after that point in time, then we'll be able to announce end user contracts. Yeah. Uh, all of the end users thus far, Andrew, we are not even going to have to truck this stuff. <laughs> they yeah. are all going to put their trucks, their drivers on the road to come and move it. It just increases our bottom line. I'm tickled to death with, about it. Uh, it just, it, that leaves out one component and, and that's not huge. That's a tail end component. But it just, uh, these customers that we're talking to, and there are six new companies that are moving into Arizona, any one single one of those companies would pick up all of our production. Yeah. So that's a, and that's a legitimate concern I think some folks had. Well, is the market really big enough? Because yeah. so many people just don't understand the helium market, where sure. it is, and they saw wild price spikes and they can talk, well, Russia's coming online or this one's coming online yeah. or Cutter could come back in. And what, you know, there's, it gets down to the next thing about that is the transportation problem that we've discussed before. Yes, yeah. uh, you vent, if you're running a liquid helium down the road, you're getting into a venting situation. And if it's middle of summer and you're trucking stuff 1,600 miles or 1,200 miles, you're losing somewhere between eight and 17% of it. Just, it's just evaporating. It's just boom. It's gone uh, forever, but you're paying for it. Yeah. Whether you, <laughs> you know, you're paying for that truck uh, and what's got loaded, not what you get. And that's one thing the uh, end users that we're talking, they are just tickled death about having, we're going to be a hundred, depending on where, where they all end up being located closest one would be about 95 miles away and uh, the rest of them between 176 to 200 road miles away. Yeah. Their, their loss of helium is so reduced that they're like, we don't need it liquefied. We're going to take it in a gaseous state because we can get it to what we need right now. And that's, that's very gratifying. And a lot of them they don't want to commit until they see what our final numbers are yeah. because my, my, the goal I have for the company is to maximize our profits, but I'm not going to put all our eggs in one basket with one company. I want this spread out between basically three, three companies or three entities. Yeah. Uh, and that could be uh, anywhere from private to uh, basically a, a private company a public traded company and probably a governmental agency. Now, so I, I'm going to ask the question, even though I know you can't answer, I've, I unlikely can, but if people will scream and yell at me, I can imagine them right now saying, can you tell us who these contracts are with? And sitting on the call last month, people did the same thing and they started throwing out tight, like, is it this person? Is it this? Is it that? And unless you're ready to reveal something that I'm, I'm not expecting, I know you can't say who those contracts yet. Hopefully we'll know soon, but well, I have and, to ask the question. <laughs> well, no, and no answer is still the same as it was last month. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I have non-disclosure, non-circumvents in place and uh, nothing's going to be announced uh, until uh, after we have those flow tests and we have actual 
uh, numbers that we know what our final processing is. You know, we have advanced our engineering work on the processing facilities up to the point to where we are now down to, we just need final flow numbers and the actual uh, chemical or gaseous uh, chemical makeup of gases that we're going to be taken out. And so we have, and we have already four scenarios uh, that can easily be plugged in. Uh, we've already discussed with the actual companies that will build those units for us. Uh, so we've, we've put that one down the field. And like someone else had asked me, well, why are you doing the solar? You should be focused on helium. Well, again, uh, I've said it before, but just to, for clarification, uh, for investors to understand, most of the time when you strip helium and xenon and krypton and argon out you it's coming out of a natural gas stream we are basically a nitrogen uh, play uh, that we're pulling this out of so we can vent that we don't have to worry about co2 sequestration uh, we're not burning a bunch of methane we're not uh, we're keeping our carbon footprint as low as possible uh, and because we don't have that methane we have to use some type of power, which means electricity. It's either that or run 15 or 20 miles of pipeline used yeah. to burn natural gas. Yeah. Why? In Arizona and at elevation, 7,000 foot elevation, uh, it's in an area that averages 1.3 inches of rain or of moisture per year. That's it. For me, so, it, makes, it totally makes sense because it's looking at the whole long-term plan of the company saying, don't look short term and just tell me what the numbers are, you know, and, and just do this, this, and just do this, is that we have a, a big vision of being a clean energy company. We want to find clean solutions. So this, the solar panels fits in perfectly with what society is asking for this whole ESG movement. Um, and it, it's, it just adds another layer of knowledge of what the market wants. I mean, it's, it's a long-term plan that some people might kind of consider being a, a, a nuisance or a step you don't need to take, but I think it adds a level to show the commitment you have to building a large scale company that, that meets every step in every market that, that needs to be a huge company. Like if it's just a small general play, you could just skip it, and just sell the asset like we'd mentioned before. But because this is a big project and it's a big undertaking, you want to hit every checkbox. And a big one is, can you provide a, a clean energy source, a solar source? And that, like you said, Arizona is perfect for it. It, uh, it works. Our goal as a company is to have the smallest carbon footprint yes. that we can. Well, Robert, well, what if you had a whole lot of snow up there? Well, number one, the angle of the property that we're putting it on and the black, they will automatically shed the, the snow. And the average snowfall in the area where we're going, as I said, there's only 1.3 inches of moisture per year. And that includes an average of two and a half inches of snow. Well, yeah. and it blows and it, it's real cold at 7,500 yeah. feet. So it's like, we're staying away from that. But then again, it still goes back to long-term cost-effective operation. A lot of people just want, well, just tell me what the quick numbers are here. Yeah. Uh, the shareholders would be really upset with me if, well, Robert, you knew that your power costs don't just keep skyrocketing. Why didn't you build this, the solar plant early? Yeah, right Because, you know, you, once you're in on that, <laughs> yes. uh, and the style we're using is not the, uh, it's a cutting edge style. And it should be good for 40 years. So if yep. we have a 13 to, to 19 year lifespan of just the main processing facilities, we're more than covered. And if it runs longer, which it would have the opportunity, depending on how other uh, areas could be fed into it, or we, again, they are a uh, mobile uh, processing facility. It basically comes yes. in two. 40 foot shipping containers uh, stacked on top of each other with another 20 foot one setting alongside if depending on what, what your uh, argon and uh, krypton gas levels on and neon they're, they're just that's just a little 
nuances, but yeah. that's all it is. Yeah. So it can be moved. So, yeah. and that's what I'm planning on same way with the, uh, uh, solar panels. One of the things we get into the grid, we start selling, even if we were say 15 years down the road, okay, we need to move these plants. We're still generating power and it's still going into the power grid. 15 yep. years, 16 years down the road, it's still positive cash flow for the company. Yep. I, I like that. It's a long-term plan that once again, it's just, it's, it's considering every conceivable option and realizing why don't we just do this now when we can do it right, right at the beginning, because the intention is to build a whole business here. The intention isn't just with a lot of juniors is to pass the property along. This is an entirely, yeah. this is a company builder. This is very different. So this, you know, once again, I want to stress that to people is that this is, this is the opportunity to do a long-term investment with a company um, that's going to hit a lot of milestones. You've got, you've got your milestones mapped out already for the year. I think it's mm -hmm. production Q4. That's, that's the end. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, yep. In the uh, fourth quarter, I'm only saying that, you know, we don't know what, you know, with the COVID vaccines coming out, we know there's a lot of things out there that will, uh, that could affect manufacturing. Everything that we are looking at using within our processing facilities is made in the U.S. Uh, nothing's coming in from offshore, uh, so we don't have to deal with any problems at Port of Long Beach or any ports or that type of stuff. Uh, it's all basically centrally uh, made in the middle of the U.S. People always ask to, will you be doing another financing? Is there an opportunity to get in at another price? What's your cash looking right now? Um, do you need to raise more money? That's always a good question. People want to know. We, we're still sitting with uh, in excess of uh, $13 million in the bank. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and, and yet we still drilled well. We've done work. We've progressed things. So yeah. we don't need money right now. We are fine. And again, it gets back to, when the price, when we start drilling, the price will get up and we want to uh, accelerate the options that we have out there available for us. Yep. Uh, they, those are at $2 and basically that raises us a, uh, another $16 million. Yep. And there's no further dilution needed. Perfect. Uh, would, could there be, you know, we may, there may be some other opportunity in between that uh, we might think of down in say mid June to uh, August time frame perhaps okay. we were first in on the uh, on the helium market last year we are still uh, turning down uh, Don and I are still turning down offers of money almost daily <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> and the amount of money we've turned down thus far after the financing would have been equal to probably two and a half times what we financed. Well, it just shows there's a lot It's smart money is looking to, to, to come to you. Uh, they're understanding the need for it, which is great. And it is, like you said, people need to understand what is healing used for. And, and we've touched on that quite a bit. This is all vertically integrated entirely. There's no offtake agreement. Uh, it's just you guys building this, this, it's going, I would think a fairly giant size company uh, that stand alone. Well, that's one of the things that a lot of folks uh, don't understand about offtake contracts. Uh, yeah, we could have signed one. We had originally talked to some of those folks about doing an offtake, and we just decided no, there's we're leaving too much money on the table because most of the offtake contracts, because there's no pipelines that you can just connect into, so you have to truck it. Processing companies, I am aware of. Uh, they want a 90 to 95% purity. Well, that means you just did all the heavy lifting and you've incurred the vast, you've also incurred approximately 87% of the cost to refine it. So you're leaving them with 13% of the cost to remove five or 10% to make triple yeah. <laughs> or more. Yeah. No, that just made no sense. And so that's one of the things people who discuss and I've had a number of shareholders and they're asking legitimate questions. Well, Robert, why don't you, why haven't you? Yeah. And it, and it just basically comes down to I, why should I spend that money to help them get three times the amount of money when we're going to do it? 
Yeah. And that's why uh, even in the short term, I'm not going to waste my gas. I am to get a little bit off take for three months or four months, five worst case. It's like, okay. And in that process, I'm going to throw away, literally throw away maybe 30 million, $40 million. Yeah. No, I can't do that to my shareholders. No, I can't. No. And I love that too, because you all along the way, uh, you've gone big on this and you've hit the milestones each time. And it's that attention to staying on that point, uh, I think is, is important too, because it's, I mean, I'm not going to say it's easy to sign an off take agreement, but that would be the easy, quick boom. I could get yeah. a release, sign off, take the, we get a, a jump in the stock price. We could do this, get a jump in the stock price. Um, and that's fine. People can do that. But th- once again, it reiterates that uh, this is a labor of love for a long time for you uh, that you're just mm-hmm. not going to hand over. <laughs> this is like your baby. No. You're not going to hand it over to anyone or just let them take off pieces of this and have that just to get a bit of news. Uh, this is a, a slow burn uh, that is, 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 is moving. Well, it's not even moving that slow. It's moving fast. Um, well, you know, there, there are some folks who, you know, because with any growing company, you have quiet periods and there's, you know, like uh, last month, there's some people just getting, uh, they just, I haven't lost sight. I, I just failed to communicate properly and make sure refocus some of those investors on the aspect of this is remember folks, this is long-term. This is not short-term. Yes. We're doing this for, for the, multi-year company and yes. for a whole lot more than just a dollar 27 yeah <laughs> that's not what i'm doing this for no no that's that's uh, that's why I, I like it is that you're it's a whole business it's not it's not a trade and people get you know excited because they say like GameStop and they see the news and this goes up this much percent this i i, I want to stay away from all those markets myself anyway um i like mm-hmm. real businesses that have real solutions to a supply and demand problem, which this fits um, and has set out its milestones and has been doing it. And yeah, it's, it's, you're, it's a long-term growth of an entire business. Um, and as far as I can see so far, you're definitely nailing it on the head. And it's not a lot of patience because I see things happening in the next six months. Uh, oh yeah, this is no, no. <laughs> it, it gets what, like it has been busy. I mean, a lot of people think, well, because they don't see you actively doing something. Yeah, you know, it's like all the oh. uh, hearings that I've done, and I, yeah. you know, it's a constant flow of what's been required, and it's just, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm still working twelve hours a day, twelve yeah. to fifteen hours a day. Yeah, well, that's okay. No, it's great. It's a, it's like, once again, you've put in a lot of time. It's a labor of love, and we're excited to see it all develop. Um, and you know, we're looking forward to the next few months, six months to see it all start to unfold, but uh, I love this grand master plan. It's, uh, it's, it makes sense to me and hopefully I'm relaying that to to subscribers. I know the people I talked to on the phone are very excited about what's happening. And, uh, so it's always a pleasure to to speak with you and to catch up. Appreciate your time. Thank you for giving me a chance to visit again. Always oh. appreciate visiting with you. Thanks. I absolutely do. Thanks so much, Robert. Enjoy your day. Uh, bye. Bye-bye. Click that like and subscribe button. And go sign up on superchargestocks.com. Let's keep you notified.